let's go through how to calculate a, um, an ANOVA F statistic in JASP. Now the beginning will be straightforward and then we want to make sure we talk about how to do post hoc tests. I'd like to point out that the data are laid out very similar to how we would see an independent t-test. If I had just had freshman and sophomore, I would have sufficient reason to do an independent t-test because that'd be two groups. But this has freshman, sophomore, junior, seniors, which is four groups, and therefore I need to do an ANOVA. So to do an ANOVA, I'm going to click on ANOVA, and then I'm going to click on ANOVA again. And so what I'm going to do is have to identify which is my dependent variable or my outcome, and then my independent variable, otherwise known as fixed factors, is going to go in this box. Now the storyline behind this is that I recorded class standing, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, and I recorded how much they paid for books. So in this story, books is the outcome variable, so that will go here. I also knew that because I have the ruler icon, meaning it's scalar or um, ratio, and then I'm going to put that uh, here. Then my fixed factor, which is you can see here, has to be the Venn diagram or the ordinal graphs picture. Because this is nominal, class or is actually ordinal, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I have to put that here in fixed factor. So these are the two things we need to put in these boxes. Now, um, before we move forward, but don't click OK yet, we can eyeball over here that uh, we have everything we need to get our ANOVA completed. Remember, the ANOVA is taking the sums of squares dividing by the degrees of freedom. We have the mean squared between, and the between effect is class standing, so that's why it's labeled here. So this is the mean squared between, and then I can take the sums of squares within, and we call that residual, because remember I was saying it's kind of like just random error, so it's residual differences. So we have sums of squares error, divided by degrees of freedom error, or sums of squares within, divided by degrees of freedom within, creates our mean squared within. So here's our mean squared between, divided by our mean squared within, and that will equal 574.6, which is our F calculated value. And here we can see that our probability of getting that F value or higher is quite small. It's so small that Jasp said it's just super small. Otherwise, it would have just um, given us the exact probability, but it's saying it's so small, it's less than 0 0.001. So that means that this is significant. Being that this is significant, we can now do a post hoc test. This right here is just the omnibus test. It is telling us that something is significant in there somewhere, and I don't know where. So I can do a post hoc test down here on the left. But remember, you shouldn't do a post hoc test if this did not come out significant, because you might find the post hoc test gives you uh, a significant value, but that would just be misleading. So this omnibus test maintains our alpha at 5%, and we are safe to move forward with a post hoc. So I'm going to click on this down arrow to select my post hoc. And now it's giving me my variables that I can do on the post hoc on. In this case, it's just class standing. So I'm going to click and put that in this box here. So now it's starting to run post hoc. You'll see that it defaults to a two key. I'm going to scroll down here. Now remember, a two key requires the assumption that we have the same sample size for each group. Um, so if you do, then the two key is the best way to go. If you didn't have the same sample size per group, you would have to run a chaffet. The chaffet is more conservative than the tukey, but um, this would uh, be an op uh, sorry an optimal approach if you didn't have the same sample size. Bonferroni we probably won't do, but I kind of wanted to introduce it to you because it's one of those things everybody should just know what a Bonferroni is. It's, it's very hard to find significance with Bonferroni, but I think conceptually what it's doing makes sense, so I think it's good to know. I'm going to scroll down because I feel like we're not quite done. I'd like to click on descriptive plots. I like to see things visually. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to put my class standing in a horizontal axis. So I'm going to scroll down over here so you can see what that did for us. What's super nice is that it put it into a picture form. Now notice this says freshman, junior, senior, sophomore. That's not really the order that we have class standing, and that's because this is alphabetical order, C, F, J, S, E, S, O. 
I'm going to show you how you would change the order so that way when you're looking at a picture, it makes sense um, for you. JASP naturally does it in alphabetical order. Now, if you're on a newer version of JASP, you won't have this OK button. You'll just have to go back to the data. But I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, if I come over to my data and I click on the word class standing, not on the icon over here, but the word, you'll notice that it has the order that it's there, freshman, junior, senior, sophomore. So I want to move these around. So it should be freshman, sophomore, let's see junior, senior. So I've moved them around. Now notice that these moved around. And that's what I want um, it to be. I want it to be in order. Freshman, so oh, sorry. Freshman, no, it's not quite there yet. Come on. Freshman, sophomore. It's probably because I just didn't hit the X yet. Okay, let me give it a minute to warm up. It should be freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. <laughs> And if you hit glitches, you're not going to be the only one. Just keep trying. OK, there it's fixed. So now it's in order, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Now, you see how the picture makes much more sense? It's kind of making some logical interpretation here. And I, I always encourage students to put a plot down so that they can visualize. Now, if I weren't to go look at my results with the post hoc, I might just go, oh, look, you pay more money for your book with each increasing year that you're in school. However, that would be an inappropriate conclusion. So you kind of want to look at this picture, but I like to start by looking at my results. I'm just trying to scroll. Up. All right. So let me show you how to read this. These are all the paired comparisons. So this is freshman and sophomore. This is then freshmen compared to juniors. This is freshmen compared to seniors. So that's the first set. That's not everything though. We still have some left over. We never did sophomore versus junior. So that's here, sophomore, junior. This is the comparison between sophomore and senior. And the last comparison we have left to do is junior and senior. Now, when you look over here, you interpret these p-values just like we did up above. Anything less than 0.05 is significant. So you can clearly see that freshman and junior are different. Freshman and senior are different. Sophomore and junior, sophomore, senior, junior, senior. All of these are different. But notice that freshman and sophomore are not significantly different from each other. See how this is larger than 0.05? So if I scroll down to my picture, what that means is that each of these dots is significantly different from each other except for these two. So all those pair comparisons, see junior versus senior sophomore versus junior, and then sophomore versus senior. All of those are significantly different, but these two, freshman and sophomore, are not. So the hardest part of an ANOVA is actually putting the post hoc into words. And there's no one way to do it. The way I might say this result is, with each increasing year in school, you pay more for your books, with the exception of freshman and sophomore, which do not dif significantly differ. There's lots of ways we could do it. We could have done each. Freshmen and sophomores don't differ, but sophomores are significantly below juniors. Juniors are significantly below seniors, something like that. One error I also see students make is um, they'll just say, oh, juniors and seniors are significantly different from each other. Well, you have to imagine that the person you're talking to doesn't have this picture. And so if you just say they're significantly different from each other, they may not know that seniors pay more for books than juniors. So you have to be clear who's below and who's above if you're going to state any of these comparisons. That's how we do post hoc tests in JASP. If you were to be running a chaffe, the chaffe would have the same basic look. You would interpret the p-values here.